My name is Ashwa Gausubayi. I'm a computer science PhD candidate at the University of Central Florida. In this video, I'll present my privacy paper, Permission VS App Limiters, Profiling Smartphone Users to Understand Differing Strategies for Mobile Privacy Management. Smartphones have become an essential part of people's daily lives. However, there is a high level of concern among users regarding their privacy and secondary usage of collected personal data. To decrease the risk of unwanted access, Android apps request access to permissions for various types of information, allowing users to accept or deny requests at a granular level. Google acknowledged how privacy permissions vary in sensitivity and classified a group of them as dangerous, since they give access to private user data or control over the device. Several privacy researchers have made strides in understanding mobile users based on either self-reported privacy attitudes or users' actual privacy behavior. Relying on either scraped behavioral data or self-report responses lacks the comprehensive understanding of how users regulate their privacy. Therefore, this study takes a step towards understanding how well behavioral and self-reported data align. We present an empirical approach to improve the understanding of privacy choices of mobile device users. In this study, we present these three research questions. The first question is about whether users exhibit similar or differing granting behaviors for dangerous permission. The second question is how do users' privacy behaviors vary? While the third question is if the, there is privacy user profiles, how do the privacy attitudes and intentions for these groups align or differ? In order to understand these research questions, we conducted a study where we recruited participants through Amazon Mechanical Turk. The participants were directed to a web-based informed consent which had important details about what data would be collected from their mobile devices. Then, they were directed to Google Play to download our study app. In the app, participants were asked to complete a survey for privacy attitudes and intentions, while in the background, the app scraped the Android device application manifest. 380 participants were able to successfully complete the study. For the data analysis, first, to add this RQ1, we applied exploratory factor analysis for the 21 dangerous permissions to reveal the underlying factor of these permissions based on users' behaviors. To create the privacy profiles for RQ2, we used two privacy behavioral measures, which were the number of installed apps and the granting permissions behavior. We conducted a series of mixture factor analysis in order to create these profiles. To answer RQ3, we investigated the differences in the self-reported measures between the generated privacy profiles by conducting a series of Wellicanova tests with the five self-reported measures, secondary use, perceived surveillance, perceived intrusion, intent to use apps, and intent to share info with apps as dependent variables, and the profile as the independent variable. Here we can see the underlying dim dimensionality of the 21 dangerous permissions using the EFA. The first factor group permissions related to reading or writing from the user's calendar and contact. The second permissions factor group permissions related to accessing user's location, camera, and recording video, audio. The third factor was the group of permissions related to phone call, read call state, use SIB, and add a voicemail. The fourth factor was a group of permissions such as sending, reading, and receiving SMS, MMS, and WA push. Looking at the table for the factor correlation, all the factors are significantly positively correlated with one another. For this study, we based our decision on the optimal number of profiles on substantive grounds and the fit measures you can see in this table. The four profile solution was the best based on a minimum level of BIC and a maximum level of entropy. For the privacy profiles, we can start with the privacy balancer group, which was a representative of the largest group. The privacy balancers practice a moderate level of privacy management for both behavior, apps installation, and permission granting. Permission limiters had the highest number of installed apps on their devices. However, they granted the least number of permissions for all categories of dangerous permissions. 
While app limiters install the least number of apps on average, they have moderately have le high level of granting permissions behavior. Their privacy and concern showed generous granting behavior for all permissions and had the, the second highest average number of installed apps. Now let's look at the results of the investigated differences between these generated profiles based on the self-reported privacy attitudes and intention. First, and ANOVA did not yield any significant differences between the profiles regarding their secondary use concern and perceived intrusion. And ANOVA revealed significant differences between the four profiles regarding their perceived surveillance. The post hoc test demonstrated the app limiters and permission limiters received a significantly higher level of surveillance than privacy balancers. While the privacy and concern received a significantly lower level of surveillance than all other groups. We also found sig different, significantly differences between the four profiles based on their intent to use apps. Post hoc tests revealed that in accordance to, with their behavior, app limiters expressed a significantly lower intention to use apps than the other profiles. We also found significant differences between profiles in regarding to their intent to share info with apps. Post hoc tests showed that app limiters expressed significantly lower intention to share information with apps than all other profiles. These identified differences provide a comprehensive of overview of the shared characteristic and distinct patterns between the behaviorally defined privacy profiles regarding a series of privacy attitudes and intention. Our results emphasize that users do, treat, do not treat all dangerous permissions the same way. Therefore, a permission interface that would allow users to grant permission on a group-by-group -group basis rather than considering each permission individually would simplify the process for granting semantically similar groups of permissions. For instance, simply deny the location camera and audio permission by default, which make it more user-friendly. The multidimensionality we found in the Android permissions makes a methodological contribution regarding how to measure privacy permission behaviors. Therefore, future research can use our dangerous permission categorization to gain a more holistic understanding of users' permission control. By presenting the profiles, we path the way for designers to account for different privacy management strategies and preferences. This profile also had empirical validated relationship to user self reported privacy attitudes and intention, which can help to ensure that any intelligent defaults or recommendations made would align with user stated privacy goals as well as their privacy behavioral profiles. In conclusion, this research makes important contribution to the fields of human-computer interaction and privacy by presenting a new methodology to address an important and long-standing question which involves allying self-reported privacy preferences to ground truth behavioral data so that we can better understand the privacy choices of mobile device users.